So, basically, for literature review, okay, I just, I like this quote, okay. Uh, a researcher cannot perform significant research without first understanding the literature in the field. This is very true because if you look at, you know, uh, I've been <laughs> seeing this since day one, uh, you need to know what you want to do. And the way to do that is you do your own research about that topic, okay? I'm sure along the way, while you're selecting the topic, um, a lot of things came up. Maybe you were unsure, maybe you find out that the field is too big or the issues are too many. But the way you structure it is gonna help you to uh, perform the best, well, I would say, systematic, uh, the best review and research that you can do, right? So the first thing is the literature, okay? And that's why in our um, class this morning, of course, I hope it helps because uh, there's a lot of information there, okay? If you pay attention and you look at how knowing the keywords of your title can lead you to a lot of different information, okay? It's very powerful thing, the Boolean search. And if you can manipulate that well, it will help you a lot in your uh, writing up, in your research, in your thesis, and not only that, also further away um, in your future. Okay, so aim for today is, uh, you'll know what is the purpose of literature review, okay? And maybe have an idea of how your own literature review would look like, okay? How to think critically, this is quite uh, important, although uh, it's very challenging sometimes, and how you plan and structure Okay, so just look at the cartoon. Uh, this is Calvin and Hobbes. I don't know if you guys still remember. Um, this cartoon was there even since I was a child. So it's still around, I think. If you open up the Star newspaper, for example, they still publish uh, Calvin and Hobbes. So it's just writing, it's not, um, it's not easy, okay? It's not easy for you guys, it's not easy for me, it's not easy for anyone actually. So there's a lot of um, problems related to writing. Sometimes you don't have ideas, you don't have inspiration, but um, as long as you go about it in a structured way, uh, it will help you a lot. Now, uh, the purpose of literature review is, it's a critical look at the existing research. Okay, so remember this morning uh, when you put in the keywords and one keyword would give you like 200,000 response. Can you imagine how hard that would be <laughs> to go through all of that? So the way you go about that is to be very critical. You have to know what you want to look for. Okay, um, so the purpose of literature review itself is to give an idea of what your research is going to be about. Okay, not only for you, but also for the readers. For the readers, for uh, whoever is going to mark your uh, thesis, whoever is going to supervise you, everyone actually. So you have to provide some background information, you have to highlight what is the importance, okay? And what is familiar in your topic, okay? And the familiarity must be linked to what's already available in the literature. That's where you do all this referencing. You reference very famous um, researchers, very fam famous professors maybe, that is um, the significant figure in your field, okay? Um, so what is a literature review? I know that it's, somehow a little bit recurring, you know, uh, saying about this again and again, but I just want you to really know that literature review, when you start doing it, it's very hard because um, there's a lot of different information out there, okay? But through this course, um, I hope that the guidelines I gave will help you in doing this step by step, 
Okay, but the first things, literature review is not an annotated bibliography. Okay, so what do I mean with this? Bibliography, you know, um, when you found an article, for example, and you just quote that, okay, and you do some sort of annotation, you say, okay, person A says this, um, and the finding says this. So it's not that, that is not literature review. That is just an annotation. So what is literature review? You know, you have all these different theories, you summarize it, and you synthesize new things from that information. Okay, um, it sounds a little bit confusing, I know, <laughs> but uh, as you go along, then uh, it will be more clear, I hope. And if you don't, if there's something that you want to ask further, don't be afraid to ask, okay? Uh, I might sometimes not notice things in chat, uh, but you can still use that if you want to ask any question, if you don't want um, to talk or there's some internet problem. You can utilize chat or in, uh, using WhatsApp, of course. Anyway, uh, the next thing is you have to distinguish what has been done already by, by um, the people in the field. And when you find the gap, okay, that gap shows you what needs to be done. Okay? So that's why you need to know uh, what are the, the key developments in literature. And this you can find by looking at the past five years, for example, um, in the topic that you look at, right? You also need to um, remember that whatever you are writing must connect with what is what is in the literature. Okay, this is where the referencing is very important. Um, okay, now to complete a literature review requires planning, reading, writing, drafting, reflection, and editing. I know that sounds like a lot, but the major thing is you need time not only while doing literature review, but whatever writing that you're doing, you're always going to need time, you have to be patient, you have to be very resilient because uh, things are not always to the point, okay? Um, so a successful literature review okay, has a firm idea of research problem. Okay, remember when we were looking at research problem last week? So that's why uh, the classes are structured as such because you you go through it structurally. Okay, you know what is your research problem, and that will help you to look at the literature. Okay, so I'm sure while you're doing your uh, selecting a topic and then you're doing um, your research problem or research statement, there's a lot of keywords that you find. Okay, these keywords helps you. Uh, further while you're doing literature review, while you're searching for articles, while you're looking for, you know, um, some theories to support your hypothesis. Okay, all of that will give you an idea to build your research framework. Okay, so conceptual framework is something that we uh, we will cover, I hope, next week. We'll see about um, the timing as well. But keep that in mind. <laughs> so don't worry, we will cover that. Now, um, so in order to refine research problem, this is what you have been doing for the past few weeks, okay? You conduct pre preliminary research, basically. So you do some write, some reading, okay? When you're selecting your topics, when you're selecting your research problems, you're coming up with your research questions, you do some research there. So that is your preliminary research, okay? So you have sort of an idea of what you are, um, doing what are the problems that you want to solve, for example, okay? Right, uh, yeah. You cannot just describe literature, like I said just now about the annotations. So you have to avoid that. It's not saying that you cannot do, it, do that at all. It forms as the basis, okay? You, from the annotations, you can find out uh, what's there, what's out there, but in your own um, head, okay, you have to be critical, you have to analyze all this and then you write, okay. So that's 
the steps there where uh, you didn't simply put out whatever is out there. Okay, you have to be critical. You have to select, be selective, and analytical. You have to judge whether it's important or not. Um, so these are the characteristics. Okay. I know that there's a lot of um, words and but the way I see it is because while I'm giving the lecture I'm not going to go through each sentences but when you do your um, own study maybe if you find any problems while you're doing re your literature review I hope you can go back and look at the guidelines for example so we will look at the guidelines afterwards um, and there are questions that you can ask yourself while you're doing your review so that that could help you. Okay, um, but just as a summary, you have to uh, ensure that your literature review outlined important research trends. Okay, and then you look at the strengths and weaknesses. Okay, and when you find that, usually from the strengths and weaknesses, you can identify um, the potential gaps, okay, so where actually your research fit in. And lastly, you can establish a need for current and future research projects. So this will be important later on while you're writing your thesis, your dissertation. Okay, uh, so I'm not sure if you guys um, have seen this one, but this is, we use this a lot, uh, Loom Taxonomy, okay. So it's how you look at knowledge or your cognitive domain. So what I meant is, while you're doing your literature review, it's actually at the higher or the thinking levels, okay? So you are essentially creating something out of the existing knowledge, okay? You are not just remembering. So while you're remembering, this is when you do your annotations, okay? So when you're doing your annotations, you just, okay, you write, uh, okay, someone says this, this, that. And then when you look at that, you understand further what they are saying, okay? And with that understanding, you apply that to what you already know while you're um, learning. So all these three years of taking environmental management course, what have you learned, okay? And you try to match that with whatever other people are saying while you're doing your um, literature review. And then not only apply, you need to analyze as well. You analyze um, because sometimes people say things that are in contrast with each other, okay? And you have to analyze that. You have to be very critical and you say, why did this person say this? Okay, why? So there must be something. Um, and that will come from your own understanding and when you're applying your existing knowledge, okay? And only then will you be able to analyze. And lastly, this tool, the next to evaluate and create is, of course, that's why doing your dissertation is one of the hardest thing before you get your cert, before you get your um, bachelor's degree, because essentially you're creating something new. Okay. and it utilizes all of this um, knowledge, okay. Uh, right, so these are the general guidelines, right. It uh, sort of repeats what I have said before, but I just put it in here unless, because if you want to look at guidelines and you just go here, you don't have to find uh, from the previous slides or whatever. So um, I'll just go very briefly. You have to introduce a literature review. Okay, um, you go through it very broad and then you um, narrow down to what your problem is or what your issue or what kind of research you want to do. Okay, and you have to discuss the importance of your topic as well. Okay, why is it important? You're not going to do something that is very general or, you know, doesn't have any um, importance to the people out there. Okay? But of course, do not attempt to cover everything. Okay? You're not going to be able to, don't do that. <laughs> it's not 
um, possible actually. So that's why you need to pick out um, the most suitable or relevant research that you want to do and what others are interested in as well. Okay. Uh, right. So you use, while you're doing your, while you're looking at um, the published literature, for example, you find, you try to find evidence, okay, to your hypothesis. So you're trying to, the purpose of doing your research is to prove that your hypothesis is right. Okay, that's essentially what you are doing. Um, and you try to find the literature that supports this. Okay, that's how you think about it from an outward point of view. So, yes, please cover research relevant to the variables that you are studying and try to explain the relationship between these variables, okay? You might not see it now, but further along when you, when you are um, trying to write, then you'll see what is the relationship between A and B, for example, okay? And there must be a reason for why something happens. Uh, and then structure your research and uh, follow the plan, basically. That is why your research proposal is important because essentially it gives you a plan that you will follow, okay, while you're doing your research. Right. Okay. Like I said just now, why is it important? Because people, uh, you have to write in a way that you show to people who are reading, why is this important? Why do you need to know about this? Okay. That's how you uh, try to package your story. Um, yes, the references. Like I mentioned before um, in the first lecture, you guys will need to use the APA standard for the referencing, right? And as a summary, literature review should include introduction, summary, and critique of journal articles your justification and your hypothesis of research project. Okay, so this might be a bit confusing, but um, you have this in your introduction actually, but usually what the way I like to do it is to um, further explain that in your literature review so people can link what you are saying in the beginning, okay, in the introduction phase where you uh, list out your own hypothesis, but at the end of the literature, literature review, you say that again, just to highlight the uh, links between whatever you're doing to your hypothesis. I hope that makes sense. But basically here is the steps for writing literature review. Okay, please bear with me. There's a little bit more slides after this, but I hope it will help you uh, while doing this literature review. Because one more thing that I want to highlight is um, literature review is for your test too. I hope you still remember. Um, and that, that is due in January. There's still a long time left, but just a heads up so you can start doing things. Uh, you can give time to yourself, okay? To plan, to organize, because you're not only doing this course this semester, you have a lot of other things as well. Right, uh, first, the steps for writing literature review, you plan, yes, and then you do research, analyzing, drafting, revising. We look um, further into these steps where we start with planning, okay? So first, you have to organize your literature review, okay? And there are a lot of orders, a lot of ways you can organize it none of this so there's no right way of doing uh, your literature review okay i'm not saying there's no correct way that's wrong <laughs> so i'm saying there's no one correct uh, way so you can actually choose which order that you want to do okay and for example if you do themes okay if you do themes, you organize your literature review using the main topics, okay, or the issues or the theories, and you um, 
explain that you describe that according to that order otherwise if you do chronological order chronology is um, related to time remember so you either organize the literature according to the dates or for example if you have um, something in terms of practices or law maybe so you can present in a progression of time so let's say you start with early 19th century for example don't go that far far back but just as just as an example um or you could do methodological you could do problem cost solution order there's a lot of different orders actually so there's no correct way but it will help you if you decide this in the beginning in the very beginning of a literature review when you plan it okay for example uh i usually do this one so a general to specific order so remember the last week's example about deep water horizon okay so i go if i'm writing something about that i would go about um, first very general pollution um spill oil spill in ocean for example that is where i start in general and then i go very specific to deep water horizon and then i talk about what is happening, what is the cause, um, what are the environmental problems that arose from that incident. Okay, that's an example. But um, it's up to you which uh, order you want to choose. Now, the second one is reading and research. Okay, so what are the relevant sources that you need? Remember this morning, um, there's a lot of other resources okay other than the online data or online databases okay that's you can also look at books you can look at newspapers there's a lot of different sources that you can use okay and read 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 true that is something that i must highlight as well you have to read a lot okay because Remember, you have to um, be very aware of what the current um, literature is and then only then can you synthesize your own knowledge. Okay? So start with annotations, right? And then from that on annotations, you can try to summarize a new point of view okay, that you can um, give in your literature review. So some questions that you can ask when you're looking at sources and you want to group them, okay? What are the similar themes? What are the similar ideas, okay? Or maybe you are looking at issues, okay? What are the um, themes that is similar between this, okay? So is there a gap missing? Maybe you have a lot of issues, but no one is looking at how to solve it. So that is a gap right um, what trends or developments are evident in the literature true okay you look at how people approach certain uh, problems or certain issues okay and then what are the theoretical approaches that you have identified okay um, the third one is analyzing okay uh, and this is to me Particularly, this is the hardest part because you not only you summarize, you need to synthesize, you need to critique. Okay, you have to compare between different um, what people are saying. And when you start with summary and synthesis, this is the, for me, and I think for everyone as well. Uh, this is the easiest part from the four. Because you just summarize, you synthesize from uh, the key findings, okay? So for example, what do you know about the immediate area or problem, okay? The key arguments, concepts, what are the existing ones, um, common methodologies. So these are questions that can help you while you're trying to look for information as well. But then when you look at comparison and critique, so usually uh, people stop at comparison, okay? You just, when you have your data, okay? 
you look at that and you just compare. Okay, my data is higher than uh, B, let's say, or my finding says that this is better than that. So a lot of the times people only stop there, but actually you have to critique. You have to ev evaluate the strengths and weaknesses. Okay, you have to try to explain why um, certain things, certain um, findings are like that. Okay, so what is new, what is different, controversial maybe. Okay, so you also critique, you have to, you know, when you critique other people, what do you say? Okay, you try to find what is contradicting, what is lacking, right? So these are questions that you have to ask as well. Now putting it all together, once you have done all four things, okay, on your um, the materials that you have, so you have to look at um, the order. Okay, remember the planning step that you do before. So link to that and see what type of writing will you do, right? Will you do general to specific or are you doing problems and then solutions or are you doing a chronological approach, okay? Um, and again, questions that you can ask yourself okay? and that will help you as well to put it together. Uh, we come to the fourth one, which is drafting. Okay, in drafting, this is where you start to write, okay? This is where you start to write, for example, uh, because before this, the annotation speed, that doesn't really count as writing. So this is when you really sit down and start to put um, the write up together, okay? And of course, for literature review, this is always similar for other types of writing as well. You have introduction, you have the body of text, and, uh, and then you have your conclusion, okay? In your introduction, you first indicate the scope, okay? So you basically, you tell the reader, right, what to expect when you read the literature review, okay? And you give some background to the topic, you demonstrate why is this important, okay? The justification or, you know, the links to the research problem, and you make a claim saying that um, you're basically linked to your hypothesis as well. And then with within the body, okay, you, uh, what would be helpful is if you have already headings for different section of your review. So this is outlines of what you are going to write because then you have sort of an idea of how the story will flow, okay? So remember, while you're writing not only this proposal, not only for literature review, but next for your dissertation, basically you're sharing your story, okay? Um, how you want to tell that story, it follows your own direction, your own organization, and you have to make sure that it's um, very logical to the reader, right? And people would understand your point of view and, you know, will be, in the end, agrees with you, with your hypothesis. So that's what you want to try to do. In your conclusions, you summarize the main findings of your review, okay? This is conclusion for literature review, <laughs> not for your dissertation. Um, the same thing, you summarize and then you provide closure because people might say, so why? So, so what is what you have to answer? Okay, so from all of these things that you've written about, what exactly is the main thing? Okay, and that will um, relate back to your hypothesis, basically what the aim of your study is. And then you can also uh, put in implications for further research or connections to the, to the current study. So usually people um, don't do this here in the literature review part, unless um, you are, your research is to propose some new um, methods or measurements, for example, okay? That's why 
as if to make it flow easier, you will highlight in the literature review, okay, there's a lack of certain system, for example. And then your hypothesis is to propose a new system. Okay. I hope you can see the, the link, the um, flow of the story. Okay. And that will help you while you're writing. Uh, okay. The second last one is revising. So this is this is number five. So in revising, you do editing, you do proofreading. So basically, editing is to revise, okay, to improve what you've already written. So for you guys, this will be done after you submit your test one and test two because I will give you feedbacks from what you've already written. Okay, so you will need to edit that and you, um, for the final exam, final exam, you uh, submitted the final one and that should include uh, the, what you've, you've already edited, okay, based on what uh, feedback I gave with test one and test two. Right, some tips for revising, okay. Of course, you look at your literature review and basically the whole document actually. So is your title consistent with the content of, the, of your paper, right? So in the introduction, do you appropriately introduce your review? Okay, does it have a clear aim? Okay, or are you being really, um, are you highlighting what is the importance? Okay, so in the body, is the organization clear? Have you provided headings? So these are things that you have to look at. Okay, when uh, usually when you're done, when you finish uh, with writing, so you look back and see whether you need to add something or you need to remove something. Okay. So for example, um, this is one example of a structure. Okay, you can start with uh, the introduction, you put in your statement, okay, and then you give the justification of your research, of your review, why you are um, talking about uh, theory A, theory B, maybe. Okay, it's up to you. And then uh, what are the limits? what you include and what you exclude okay. but of course these are all um, examples okay these are suggestions you don't have to follow this but um, it gives you an idea of one structure okay um, right so in summary try when you read something try to see the bigger picture okay um, and what's useful for example, when you look at uh, the articles, the scientific articles, or uh, when you're searching, okay, it would be useful if you first look at the abstract and the conclusion, and you can get basically an idea of what this paper is all about. If it's um, suitable for what you are um, looking at, then you can start reading the others as well. But that will give you an idea. It will help you to screen from maybe hundreds of papers to like maybe 10 because that is more manageable for you guys. Okay. And then uh, please include the source materials. So when you read, you have to um, make references. Don't forget about that because these are um, the things that will help you when you justify, when you discuss certain things, people want to know, is this just what you're saying or do you have a proof? So this acts as the proof, okay, for uh, whatever you're saying. And then, um, yes, summarize and also analysis as you write, okay. So you can go back later on and see what is uh, in summary and analysis. And then, uh, yes, further questions. How is how will this review benefit readers? Okay, again, highlight the importance why people would be interested in this. And lastly, how 
when you're writing this literature review, how does it contribute to your, your study as a whole? Okay, Because it gives you an idea, it gives you a framework of what to look into, basically. Right? And citations, of course, this one, um, I can't help but highlight this all the time because uh, please make sure that you cite, okay, even uh, when you find some sentences that are very um, interesting, copy pasted that, usually you have to rephrase that, okay, and then you have to cite that as well, okay. Um, these are some pitfalls to avoid, okay, language, right. Okay, so um, please remember that this is an academic writing. Okay, so in academ academic writing, you have to be professional, you have to use professional language, right? And that includes even in the beginning, the title, um, all whatever that you write in your dissertation later on, you have to use very professional language, okay? The only place where you don't need to is when you do your um, penghargaan, okay? When you are thanking someone for their help or something like that. That one is not, you don't have to use professional language. So you can use whatever kind of language that you want. Secondly, don't plagiarize. Of course, this is a very big issue. Um, even in academia, this is very, very widespread. Okay, there's a lot of uh, people who are caught plagiarizing, okay, and it's not a good thing. It relates to your ethical, um, your ethics as well. Um, too many quotations. So what I meant by quotations here is when you take a sentence, for example, from um, whatever articles that you use, and you don't paraphrase it, you just put it in, okay? So don't do that too much because, you know, only the ones that are really, really important, okay? For example, if you have some very uh, well-known uh, figure saying one thing, okay? And you really want to highlight that as uh, something that is, you know, maybe uh, the philosophy of your uh, paper, maybe, so you want to highlight that. So only that, but don't use too much of that because um, people start to question the legitimacy of your uh, writing, okay? You have to be, so the writing up has to be cohesive. You have to have a flow, okay? It must transition nicely. So one section must have links with the next one. So this goes back to the story that you're telling. So you're not, when you're watching movies, for example, it flows very nicely. You can follow. Even if you uh, miss the first half of the movie, usually you can just enjoy the second half. That's how you think about your write-up as well. Um, it flows very nicely, okay? Which is why the organization that I mentioned earlier is very important as well because that will help you to structure your write up. Okay, um, failure to link the findings of the review to your own study. Okay, this happens sometimes because um, usually you just put in everything that you find in the literature into your own literature review. Okay, and sometimes it doesn't link to one another, so you have to avoid that. Okay. Um, do, does not start the reading process early. Yes, uh, because remember, read, read, read. So you have to read a lot, okay? Um, does not refer to primary sources, lazy research. Yes, um, I'm highlighting that because uh, what sometimes I find students do is while they're doing their literature research, they tend to only look at review papers, okay? So if you search for review papers, usually it will give you um, papers where it reviews the topic that you want, okay? So usually 
people who are doing this uh, review papers, they will have like 100 to 200 references. So imagine that, a lot of references. And they come up with one paper. <laughs> and what um, my students sometimes do, I notice this, uh, they just use this uh, review and then write their own literature review. That is not okay because the review paper are supposed to help you to um, get an idea of the general topic, okay? And you have to find out the um, sources for this because review papers are usually called um, secondary sources, okay? Primary sources are the technical papers or, you know, the results of interviews, of um, field studies. So very, people who are doing that is the primary sources, okay? Next one is absence of criticality and accepting findings as valid without questioning all aspects of the research design, okay? So this is, you have to be critical. Again, try to critique as much as you can. Not critique in the sense that just highlighting, oh, this is wrong, but why is it wrong? Okay, you have to be able to argue that. Okay. Ah, it's fine. So there's quite a lot there. I hope you guys still are okay. Do you have any questions? <laughs> 